Well, hello and welcome to worship. My name is Russell Miller. I'm one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church in Bernie, and it's a privilege to have you worship with us today. Today we're beginning a new series based on the book of Psalms. We're calling them Songs for the Journey of Life. And even though these are ancient, ancient texts, I think you will find that they're very relevant for today. So now I invite you to prepare your hearts, prepare your space, prepare your mind as we see what God might have to say to us today. Good morning. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us. My name is Karen Andrews and I'm the Director of Music and Worship here at First United Methodist Church of Bernie. This is the time in the service that we have prepared our hearts and our spaces and now we want to prepare one another by passing the peace of Christ. And that may mean just reaching over and patting the hand of the person who is sitting and worshiping with you. But that may mean reaching out to someone who you know needs an extra bit of peace in their life this week. So I hope you'll take time to do that now. And as we are preparing uh, for our, our opening song, I also invite you to text in and let us know that you were worth worshiping with us. So I hope that you will do both of those things as we prepare to uh, worship and sing together. Thank you. 
Good morning, church. My name is Rachel Ladmer. I'm the contemporary worship leader here. I want to invite you to stand or take whatever position of worship is most comfortable for you in the space that you're in, and we're going to worship this morning. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide but i know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, because you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. Oh, it's love so undeniable. I, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable. I, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, 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 your good, good Father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am. Amen. As we go to God in prayer, we know that these are difficult times. If you're feeling lonely or isolated and wish you had someone to talk to, we want you to know that Stephen Ministry is still available for you. It's a confidential one-on-one, -on -one, very safe place to express your concerns. At the beginning of the service, um, there was a slide to give information on if you would like a Stephen minister, and there will also be that same slide at the end of the service for you to just give us a call at the church office or to contact Thora Stark. Now let us go to God in prayer. Oh Lord our God, as we sit in quietness, our thoughts are far from quiet. We are wrestling with doubts and fears. We are looking for answers. We are hoping against hope. We are seeking strength. We are hungry for warm sunshine, for healed bodies, for rest from tears. Your word says the hungry will be filled, and we ask today for you to fill us. Fill us with the breath of life. Fill us with thankful hearts. Fill us with calmness, courage, and most of all, with the knowledge of your presence. We pray now in our hearts for those we know who need to be lifted before you.
There are others we know and love who are ill, and we ask, O oh God, that you would surround them with your strong healing presence. Grant wisdom to those who need answers to difficult questions. Grant hope to those who despair and friendship to those who feel lonely. Most of all, O oh Lord God, may we know your love, your great love with you have for each one. You know the hairs on our head. You count each beat of our heart. You knit us together when we were being formed. You know our getting up and our lying down. You are familiar with all of our ways. There is no place we can hide from you. You were there at our beginning and you will be with us through to the end. May we not lose sight of your constant care. We look to you, O oh God, to be present in our communities and in our world. Continue to show us how we at First United Methodist Bernie can be part of your work in the world. Teach us how we can grow into faith and become more and more like Jesus. And now we gather all of our prayers together, the spoken and the unspoken, and pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Eternal God, in the reading of the scripture, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. Today's scripture is Psalms 139, 1 through 18, from the New Revised Standard Version. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. And if I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even in the darkness is not dark for you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret. Intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them had yet been realized. How wonderful that weighty to me as your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. 
I try to count them. They are more than sand. I come to the end, and I am still with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is time for young disciples. I am so glad you're with us in worship today. So we're going to sing. And while we're doing that, if you want to grab a friend or a stuffed animal or a sibling or a pet, and uh, they can come and worship with us too, you can do that now. And we'll be right back here in a second. In our scripture today, you may have heard something about being knitted together by God, if you were listening. And some of you may have never seen knitting. So I'm going to knit for you. No, I'm not going to knit for you now. I don't know how to knit. But we have this beautiful knitted blanket that you might have seen on the altar if you were watching earlier and paying really close attention. And I have heard that this blanket was made by Miss Sylvia's grandmother. So when you're knitting, you are taking these needles and you're wrapping yarn around them and you're making magic happen. I honestly don't understand. But then you kind of piece it all together, not like a quilt exactly, but in this case, it could be um, different sections get knitted together, right? And so in the scripture, when they're talking about being knitted together by God, that just means that God took extra care and detail and attention when you were being made, when you were being created. So if you imagine, it doesn't happen exactly this way, but imagine every little single piece of you being connected by God and God taking that kind of care and attention to detail over you, over everyone, every single person on the planet. And not just that, every single animal on the planet and every single plant on the planet. God took attention to detail and cared about each one of us so much that we were knit together in a very special way. So that's cool enough, right? But then when you have something special that's knitted together like that, you love it and you take care of it, and it means something to you because you took so much time and attention in the making of the thing. You don't want to just chuck it on the floor or let the dog chew it up. No, it's a special thing, and sometimes it's given as a gift. It's given away as a sign of how much you love someone. And God made each of you and knitted you together and loves you and cherishes you and you have a purpose just like this blanket's purpose is to keep us warm you have a purpose that god knit you together for you are to a gift you are a gift that can be given to the world and i think that's so very special so i hope that you hear that in our scripture reading today and hear that all week long that god made you and loves you, and cares for you, and you are special and a gift. Can we pray? Let's do that. Repeat after me. Dear God, we praise you today for making each of us special to you and special to the world. Amen. We love you guys. We miss you. We'll see you soon. PBS just finished airing season five of one of my favorite shows. Grant Chester is set in an English village in the 1950s and it follows the life of the village vicar who actually spends most of his time assisting the police chief in solving crimes. But like in every good series, there are always lots of characters and plot lines that intersect. In one recent episode, Leonard, who is the curate of the church, is trying to cheer up Mrs. Chapman 
who is the often sour housekeeper. He's trying to convince her that God really wants humans to be happy, and he does so by quoting her from Scripture. Now, Mrs. C, as they lovingly call her, always seems to have a comeback to whatever Scripture that Leonard quotes to her. His last attempt is a verse from the Psalms. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, he says. To which Mrs. C retorts, oh, that's just from the Psalms. There's a lot of nonsense in Psalms. Well, today we're beginning a new series based on the Psalms, and I hate to tell you this, Mrs. C, but there's a lot of things in Psalms that are not nonsense. The book of Psalms was the worship book for the Hebrew people, and it contains 150 pieces of poetry. And at one time or another, each of them was set to music. And these pieces were written and shaped and collected and used for well over a thousand years by the Jewish people. And now we in the Christian church also claim this as our own. Many of the psalms were used for corporate worship, just like we use hymns and praise songs today. There were songs to be sung as pilgrims traveled, made their annual journey to Jerusalem to the temple. There were songs to be sung in worship, reminding the people of Israel of their salvation history, praising God for God's faithfulness, even when the people of Israel had been less than faithful. But many of the psalms were also used for more private devotional moments. Some of them are very intensely personal. They give us a theology in verse of who God is, of the nature of people, and of the kingdom of God. One of the most amazing things to me about the Psalms is that they run the gamut of all human emotion. There are Psalms of thanksgiving, and there are Psalms of lament. Psalms of prayer for help, and Psalms of anger, and even vengeance. Psalms of praise and trust, and Psalms of utter frustration, wondering if God is even there. Psalms of wisdom and instruction, and Psalms asking for answers. Many are full of raw emotion. The truth is, if you can feel it, you can find it in the Psalms. And so that's going to be the trajectory of our four-part series on the Psalms. Today, we're going to start with a Psalm of faith. And next week, Lori will guide us through a Psalm of pain. Then I'll be back to introduce a Psalm of restoration. And Lori will finish the series with a Psalm of joy. Now, of course, there's so much more to these Psalms than only these four emotions but they'll give us a sense of how the psalms are designed for the journey of life. If the only psalm you really know very well is Psalm 23, well, you're off to a great start. But I hope that over the course of these four weeks, we can introduce you to some additional songs for you to use on your journey of life. And so today we'll begin with a psalm of faith. And there were many such psalms that I could have chosen to use today, many that are majestic and triumphant, like Psalm 150. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise God in his mighty firmament. Or Psalm 66, make a joyful noise to God, all the earth, sing the glory of his name, give to him glorious praise, say to God, how awesome are your deeds. But today I chose a more gentle Psalm of faith. Psalm 139, it has long been one of my very favorites. So we're going to take a closer look at this psalm because it speaks to us of God's inescapable presence. First, the psalm acknowledges that God knows us deeply and intimately, even better than we know ourselves. God knows all of our ways, all of our doings. God knows our thoughts and our words even before we have formed them. And we get a sense that God has known us from before we were even born, There's some very beautiful and tender imagery here of God knitting us together in our mother's womb. It makes me imagine God like a woman with knitting needles clicking rhythmically as she rocks in her chair, producing a beautiful creation, something like this. It causes the psalmist to proclaim, I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Each of us is an amazing creation of God. We might look in the mirror and be disappointed at what we see there, but God looks at us as a miraculous work of art. And not only that, each one of us is unique. There never has been and never will be another quite like you. 
Did you know that not only do you have a unique fingerprint, you have a unique tongue print too? At least according to Google, that's true. Google also tells us that there are 206 bones in your body, more than half of which are in your hands and your feet. That every square inch of your skin contains 20 feet of blood vessels, four yards of nerve fibers, and three million cells. In an average lifetime, your heart will beat three billion times, and you'll take about 23,000 breaths just today alone. And need I say this aloud, but these things are true for everyone, no matter the color of their skin or their socioeconomic status or their education level or their sexual orientation or their religion or their political affiliation. We are all masterpieces of God's handiwork. The psalmist who wrote Psalm 139 lived in an age and a time where science could not yet describe the intricate workings of the human body. And yet somehow he or she understood at a deeply personal level just how amazing we are. So this psalm gives us a sense that God is with us from the beginning, even from before the beginning, if we can imagine it. Then there is also the sense that God walks alongside us in every moment of life, from the seemingly mundane things like going to bed at night and getting up the next day, to the major life markers, like walking through the valley of the shadow of death. In every moment, God is there. So much so, the psalmist declares that even if we wanted to escape from God, we couldn't do it. Even if we flew on the wings of the dawn to the farthest limits of creation, were we to even go to the deepest pit of hell, we would not, we could not escape from the presence of God. The psalmist uses the term Sheol here. It's an early Hebrew term for the place of the dead. Now, early Jews didn't carry much of this of a concept of life after death. There was no heaven for good people and hell for bad people. That theological development came much later. So Sheol was just this sort of shadowy place where people went when they died. And the general thought was that not even God could go there. But even there, declares the psalmist, even there, your hand will hold me fast meaning that God stays with us and sustains us from before the beginning until after the end. Now, I think there might be about three different ways to look and think about what the psalmist has to say here. The first way is to make this really sweet and sentimental, to take some of this lovely imagery and be tempted to screen, pill, screen print it on a pillow for your couch. It just makes you wanna go, aw, isn't that sweet? But you know what? I'm not sure any part of the Bible is supposed to have such a surface and cursory interpretation. Surely there is more to this than just sugar and spice and everything nice. Surely there's something deeper, more profound here. Another way to look at it can be actually quite unsettling. To think that you can never escape from God's presence, that God knows everything that you're doing and thinking and saying. Well, that's not exactly comforting especially if you inherited in your faith upbringing, as I did in mine, this image of God as a grumpy old white man in a beard who is looking for all your flaws and mistakes and sins so that he can punish you. Oh, how I wish we could get rid of that image of God in so many people's minds, because if that were a true image, this psalm would not be comforting at all. It would just be downright creepy. So how else can we interpret, interpret the psalm of faith? Remember, that's what this is. It's a psalm, a personal faith in an amazing God who creates amazing people and then accompanies those amazing people on their life journey. God doesn't just create us and then rest on God's laurels to see what will happen to us. God allows us to be ourselves and do what we choose to do and make our decisions both good and bad God never abandons us. I think a contemporary image we might use to understand this kind of God might be found in the story of Derek Redmond. Now you can find all kinds of videos on what happened to Derek Redmond, and we've included a link to one of those videos in the comment section of this video. I recommend that you watch it, it's, it's very moving. And I wish I could just show it to you here, but we wanted to stay copyright safe. So let me tell you the story. 
Derek Redman was a runner in the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, Spain, and he was favored to win a medal in the 400 meter race. In the semifinal portion of the race, Derek tore his hamstring about 150 meters in. He stopped briefly, and then he began limping and hopping his way along the track, still intending to finish, clearly. And it was at this point that his father broke through the security lines to come to his son's aid. And even though Derek was in agonizing pain, his father helped him make it the rest of the way around the track. And just before the finish line, his father let go and let Derek cross on his own to a standing ovation from the crowd. Later on in the interview, the father said, we started his career together and we'll end it together. I think that's the kind of divine presence the psalmist wants us to grasp. That's the kind of loving parent God is, one that doesn't abandon us. Not so he can judge us for all our mistakes, but so that he can cheer us on and support us when things go awry, as they always do. We see that kind of divine presence both in the image of a woman knitting together a work of art and in a father helping an injured child cross the finish line. It's neither syrupy sweet nor creepy. It's love at its fullest. As I've thought about this over the last several weeks in preparation for today, I've wondered, have I forgotten that God is always present with us? In last week's sermon on Jacob, we heard about Jacob coming to the same kind of realization. If you remember the story, Jacob was traveling through a wilderness, escaping the wrath of his brother Esau, whom he'd swindled, and who was out for blood. Jacob came to a place to camp overnight, and there he encountered God in a dream. And in that dream, God said to Jacob, know that I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go. When Jacob woke up, he set up a memorial stone in that place, and he proclaimed, surely God is in this place, and I didn't even know it. Friends, I don't know about you, but these last several months, I feel like I'm in a wilderness. The world is this place I hardly recognize anymore. It's unfamiliar and sometimes even frightening. There's danger out there from natural sources like viruses and from human created sources like prejudice and division and hate. Some people use many of their 23,000 daily breaths to degrade, to divide, and to denigrate others. Some use many of their 206 bones to destroy, to defile, or to desecrate. Sometimes it feels like we're just limping along, wounded and broken and alone. Sometimes it just feels like a great big old pile of Sheol, if you know what I mean. I confess. I have wondered if God might finally have given up on humankind and abandoned us to a fate of our own making where we destroy one another and our home planet in an effort to prove who is right or who is better or who has more power. But this Psalm, Psalm 139, it brings me back to a place where I can take a deep breath and know that God remains faithful even when I don't have enough faith to believe it. I don't know how things are going to go from here. I don't know how long this coronavirus is going to keep us apart from one another. I don't know what the election will bring or what strides will be made in the effort to reduce racial inequalities. I don't know how the church is going to rise up to be more faithful and more loving. I don't know what the end will be. But the psalmist gives us something we can know in verse 18 where he says, I come to the end, God, and I am still with you. My prayer for all of us on this journey of life is that we are able to recognize God's presence even in the midst of our wilderness wanderings. Where will you find God today? In the face of one of those other amazing human creations around you? Will you find it in the beauty of nature? Will you find God in some kind words that build up instead of tear down? Maybe you'll find God in a gesture of friendship or helpfulness or love. And once you find God, would you share your God sighting with me? Post them in the comment section of this video. Share with your church family and others 
what the psalmist has said is true, that even there, wherever there is for you, even there, your hand will lead me, your right hand will hold me fast. Thanks be to God for God's inescapable presence. Amen. Please join me in this litany as an act of response to the spoken word. Your words will appear on the screen. We are God's work of art. Each one of us is a precious gem, a marvelous melody, a potter's delight. We are God's handiwork, woven together in love, shaped with infinite compassion, painted with incredible beauty. We are the church of Jesus Christ, diverse in human qualities, but united in our call to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are the body of Christ, living in his truth, sharing his peace, carrying his hope, embodying his love throughout the world he loved so much. We are here to be reminded once more who we are, whose we are, and what our lives are about. We are here to be uplifted, renewed, and empowered to live out the miracle of who we are by the power of God working in and among us. We open ourselves to God who makes all things new. Every journey requires some nourishment along the way, physical, emotional, spiritual. That's why we come to this table week after week 
to receive our spiritual nourishment for our journey of life. It's here at the table that we can see an image of God that is more true and more accurate, I believe. And that we see it when we retell the story of how Jesus spent the night before his death with his friends and he sat at table with them and he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body. He was saying, this is my life. It's broken and it's given for you. Take it. And every time you do, remember. When the supper was over, he took a cup of wine. And again, he gave thanks for it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink. All of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And every time you drink it, remember. It's in these symbols of bread and cup that we're able to see that God is not an angry God trying to find ways to punish us, but God is a loving God, giving God's very life away on our behalf. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and cup and those out there, wherever they are, that they may lead us in our spiritual journey and nourish us along the way. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is poured out for you. Again, let's pray. We give you thanks, O God, for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Now help us to go and give ourselves to others. In your name, amen. Every week we invite you to act out your faith and that looks different for everybody and that's a good thing. But today we have a very specific invitation for you. We are getting very close to being able to live stream these worship services instead of pre-recording. And online worship isn't going anywhere, even once we are able to worship together in the same space again. So we are looking for people. Even in this digital age, we still need people to help us with this project. So if you are interested in being trained on how to use this new system and help us move into this digital space for worship, then we invite you to contact us. Specifically, you can email me, kandrews at fumc-bernie.org, and just let us know that you're interested. If you have some technical proficiency or interest, that's really, really helpful. But if not, and you are passionate about sharing the love of Jesus Christ in this new world that we are in, we will work with you and try to train you as best we can to use the technology that we have available to us. So with that in mind, let's prepare ourselves for our time of offering. And when you give to this church, you're giving for projects like these. You're giving so that we can help share the love of Christ in tangible and intangible ways. And you're giving back to God that has given us so very much. So let's take a moment and pray and ask for God's blessing on these gifts, whether you're giving online or giving of your heart this week. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we ask that you touch these gifts of ours and use them to your glory, that they be multiplied and brought forth to help bring the kingdom of heaven just a little bit closer to earth. We ask this in your loving name. Amen. I was there to hear your morning cry I'll be there when you are old I rejoice the day you were baptized To see your life unfold I was there when you were but a child With the faith to sue you well 
in a place of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell when you heard the wonder of the word i was there to cheer you on you were raised to praise the living lord in whom you now belong if you find someone to share your time and you join your hearts as one i'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dust till rising sun in the middle ages of your life no longer old no longer young i'll be there to guide you through the night complete what i become when the evening gently closes in and you shut your weary eyes i'll be there as i have always been with just one more surprise i was there to hear your warning cry i'll be there when you are old i rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life This week, it's my prayer that you will feel God's presence with you in new and deep ways. May it bring you comfort and peace and blessing, for you are God's beloved. Amen. No, because that's already recorded. Okay. For you, I didn't introduce myself. Okay. Just Restart. Keep going. Yeah. Keep Take whatever position is, uh, whatever. Ah! This week, it is my prayer that you will feel God's presence in a new and deep way. That will be a blooper reel because I just <laughs> forgot everything else. But we don't have to do bloopers anymore, really. No. Okay.